Hello and welcome back guys. This was actually the game that brought me back to Diamond uh, for the 10th time now <laughs> on my third account. Th I think this is very interesting for many reasons because our team comp is a Paladin, a Demonic or Shadow Hunter and me as the Blade. And the enemy team has a Gunslinger, Artillerist and a Sorceress. So with that being said, this is a very defensive enemy team comp and also kind of hard for us to engage into the backline. And you see me struggle with that in the very beginning. So first I'll show you guys the gameplay and then we will have a commentary afterwards so I can basically walk you through what I thought in which moment. Okay, see you later.
Welcome back now for the commentary, I guess. We're basically five seconds in, nothing happened yet, so let's get started. So first of all, it's, this game is about positioning, as I said before. And as you can see, I'm trying to make space already. I'm trying to force the role of the gunslinger here while my team is actually fighting the blaster in the back line. So it's basically an opposite, like a mirror match now. So me versus two and the blaster versus two. Which is normally a good thing against ranged team comps because these kind of team comps want to always support each other. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit too aggressive. And I mean, you saw that already that I got caught here. And take a big crit from the sorceress as well. I didn't check what stats she's running, but th that those sword crits do hurt a lot. And again, I don't have a roll right now, but I'm still playing a little bit too aggressively. Going in again, but I do catch the sorceress, get the roll. Is that enough though? So as you can see now, this is basically a little bit of an even situation. I got a little bit of damage off on the Sork and a little bit of damage on the Gunslinger. Well, my team get, did get a good amount of damage onto the Blaster. Now, that is what obviously I want to happen. But the problem is I'm already very, very low health. So I was too aggressive. I overcommitted a little bit. I could have done all of that without, um, without getting hit so much, you know. So the, in the beginning, I'm struggling to adapt to that team comp because as a blade, normally you want the enemies to engage into you and not the other way around. So now, we, this is like a little bit of a chaos now, but a little bit of chaos. They, they, you can see my my demonic getting stunned, but gets a big roof in from the paladin, and that's what I wanted uh, from this to happen because as you can see, the demonic did ba basically do no damage and the paladin is super super safe as well so all of the space that i created was actually used this is this was a very uh, cleanly executed start for my teammates on the other hand as you can see i'm dead so that <laughs> you don't want that to happen but you can see that you can see that we have a slight hp advantage now although i am dead so if my teammates can play it somewhat safely until i'm alive again we can actually push our advantage so here I respawn again, I come back in, my team played it safely and I try to go back into the backline once again. I know that the Sork does not have a roll anymore, so I can basically commit to a full combo. My team recognizes that as well, so we almost kill the Sork in one combo and we can finish her off here. We could have done that already earlier and at the same time my team already finished the other two guys. So now this is where, it, where everything basically turns around. As you can see, it's three and one right now. While my teammates are somewhat low, we do have a slight advantage here. And now please take a look at how I play this because this is where you can really push aggression. As, as you can see, the Sork died way later than the other two teammates. So these other two guys are respawning right now while the Sork is still not there. So we have a man advantage and I'm trying to force the enemy to, well, commit to me while I'm playing over aggressive. As you can see, I'm getting everything off into a double ultimate, into a da another identity, one-shotting the gunslinger. Now this is important again. This would have been good even if I didn't hit the blaster with that ultimate. Because now this means that the Sork is respawned and we are three people again. So again, I'm, we're out manning them while while the while the enemy can't really recover so this is something very important if you have an advantage like this it's very important to just push it a little bit further if you can obviously you need a team to back you up as well but this is this is basically what turned everything around me one-shotting that gunslinger because she went over aggressive because she she thought i was out of position although i wasn't and as it, even the blaster is running out of rolls the Sork is now the, alone in the backline, which gives me a free, well, engage as well. And the Sork obviously tries to peel for herself, but it's not so easy if you have nowhere to go, as you can see as well. Like, her, the positioning of this team is very much at their own base. So they can't go back into the base fire because it's current health um, damage, percentage damage. So if they go back into that, then they will eat a lot of damage even without me doing anything. And the other option is just running against the wall. So they can't really go anywhere. My team is also ready and it's already 5 and 1 now. So that entire se sequence basically turned the game around. And we keep pushing here. Again, we have a man advantage because the blaster died. The sorceress also did a panic ultimate because she just wanted to get something back and also misses the hard CC. Unfortunately, I don't catch the I don't catch the gunslinger in my whirlwind slash here, which could have been even better. I get that this big cleave alone is already very important, but me coming back into this and actually getting both in is super, super, super slick. 
which can actually lead to another big combo but as you can see i didn't i didn't i didn't get the gunslinger unfortunately but this is still good because with the whirlwind with the cyclone of sudden attack i can throw the sork in the opposite direction of the gunslinger so i have a little bit more time to actually pressure her although i still get hit by the by the gunslinger shot at the very end there but the sorceress is again basically alone and here i got a little bit lucky because if you didn't know this, this electric orb, this lightning orb, actually has a 10% chance to heart CC. So there was a good chance that I would have gotten CC'd in my identity. But I didn't, so it worked out. And this is also important to note that if you have two low players like this, especially if, uh, well, only two enemy teammates are not back up yet, you can still play pretty aggressively, especially because we have a support, right? So as long as this guy is safe, we can play this aggressively. And the blaster doesn't anticipate me going in again. And a huge... Paladin ult comes through, which I saw, told you about. Even if we're low health here with the support, we can still, you know, take a lot of damage. Although I did get caught again in an engage. Sork tries to hard CC me again, but, uh, you know, I, uh, I dodge it once again. But now we are in another tricky situation. Two, uh, two of my teammates are dead now, which is okay because we're still way ahead and the enemy team has pretty low health. But if I commit here, without a roll especially, I will die. So what I'm trying to do is just basically pressure them into going maybe out of our spawn a little bit so my teammate or my teammates don't have the the pressure that we applied earlier right so they can actually walk around the map without anything and the gunslinger luckily over commits again so I can punish that although that this could lead to my death which is still worth it because as I said this is creating a lot of space for my team because these two guys can pressure our fresh respawns. And as you can see, I do get caught, but the Paladin Shield comes through and I do get hard to see it here, almost killing the blaster, but I will I will die in return. So now my team has a little bit of an issue, obviously, that now they are in a not a super good position, but it's 2v2. So the blaster is dead. We did kill the blaster. So we're still in a decent position to to you know take this home. I'm always monitoring the health bars of my teammate while I'm dead and they're trying to reposition once again. The gunslinger over commits and I have the chance to go into the back line again. Very good demonic ultimate or shadow hunter ultimate locking down the blaster while I get locked down by the sword. I was a little greedy there with the with the identity. Uh, I didn't really have anything else to, to combo her with, so I was just, you know, fishing for it. And I'm over committing a little bit too hard again. As you can see, this was a very quick sequence and I'm almost dead. So if you play against these kind of very defensive team comps, you always have to keep in mind that, do that you can't waste your dodge, first of all, and you have to be using it very reactively. And I didn't do it there and I got caught. So I see, I see my paladin being comboed by the blaster here. I'm a little bit far away, so as you can see, the mine is already up. He's already shooting, well, his entire arsenal of whatever, of bombs at the at the, at the the Paladin. So I know I can't really save him, and I'm a little bit too late to save him properly. But nonetheless, he doesn't have a shield. So that means this is basically a free knockup for me with Blitz Rush. Although this will not really save my teammate, it's still good to do. Because obviously getting a roll out of the blaster is always useful and it's free damage as well. The blaster actually opts, opts into rolling very late to actually bait my shadow hunter there, which did work out pretty well. So now we know that the blaster doesn't have a roll or the artillerist and the gunslinger. The gunslinger gets caught by the shadow hunter and the artillerist is now in a problematic situation. He does have shield up, catches me with the flamethrower, but if he gets caught here, he will basically die and that's what happened. The Holy Knight recognized the flamethrower. You, can, you can't really cancel out of that unless you have a dash as far as I know. So the Holy Knight recognized that and CC'd him. And we got the punish as well. And now we're entering what last minute buff. And this is also important. If you didn't know, the last minute buff gives you bonus crit and bonus damage. Which uh, is different in all regions, by the way. In Korea, it's only 30 seconds. But in Russia, it's still one minute. This means that this could go either way still. Because we're, we have two low teammates, which is me and the Shadow Hunter which would get them to seven points. And then if they kill us again, they would be at 10 points as well. Obviously, this is very hard for them to do, but there's always comeback potential in these uh, in these fights. And as, as you can see, the Shadow Hunter is a little bit out of position, gets the roll off in time though. And it's very hard for us to do anything without the, without the Paladin. And now we are in that tricky situation because the Shadow Hunter is very low. 
and I am dead. So the Paladin, if he doesn't, if he doesn't play it somewhat safely, could be facing a 1v3 situation. And with the last minute buff active, that could be very scary. So I respawn. The demonic is playing it somewhat safe, but gets caught at the end by the gunslinger. And now there's there's just not much we can do outside of just keeping the pressure up. The gunslinger did not have roll, but I do get staggered, unfortunately. I catch a, the I catch the sorceress there with my identity. And now we get caught by a big gunslinger ultimate. Now this is not as not as scary as it looks because Mr. Holy Knight over here or Mr. Paladin already had a damage reduction up. So this was like 21k, 20k damage on each of us, which could have been like 35k or more. And we're comboing the gunslinger again. Try I'm trying to get a wall wind here with the sudden attack, but he gets knocked the other direction, but it was fine. Got the full moonlight sonic off and finish off the gunslinger, which means now in the last 20 seconds, the enemy team has to get four kills, which is almost impossible. So at this point, we can play more more aggressively and have a little bit of fun. Um, trying to get the blaster again, getting the crit, getting very lucky with these crits, actually, in this last minute. And uh, the Sork with a big crit on the Paladin gets, it gets him as well. I recognize the nuke coming down here, so I'm not gonna really interact with the blaster anymore because I already know we won. And as I said before, in all of these situations, especially with such a team comp, it's good as a blade if you have two teammates that can follow up or use the space that you create and that will lead to our victory. GG guys, was fun. It was, was actually a fun game as you can see. We had, this, these were two silver players but they played very well and as I said in Russia especially, uh, rank doesn't really account to too much because you can basically play against a grandmaster in your first rank game. And obviously everyone is preparing for the for the EU release, so this is about as high quality game as you can get uh, nowadays on Russia. And it was very nice, a very, very good showcase. As I said, we struggled a lot in the beginning, um, but did bring it back at the very end to, to to show you guys some some blade ranked. And this actually brings me to Diamond GGs in the chat. It was was a fun game, and as you can see now, brought me back to Diamond. And uh, yeah, it was a fun game. I hope this commentary helped you out a little bit. If it did, consider subscribing. We'll probably have a little bit of a showcase for Demonic, but that would been that will be probably live commentary as well. Uh, if you want to see me play games live, <laughs> twitch.tv slash Nikotulo. And yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. See you in the next video. Lost Ark is pretty close. Peace.